Field Trips features real field stories told by real ASCE members. This episode of Field Trips is sponsored by Tensar. I'm Derek Dosenbrock, and this is my field trip. Just about 20 years ago, our geotechnical group acquired its first dedicated cone penetration rig. It was a small tracked rig with an outdoor operating area. In a demonstration project, the cone had shown promise for use in Minnesota soil conditions for geotechnical characterization of transportation structures, such as roadways, culverts, retaining walls, bridges, and slope failures. It would eventually prove to be faster and less expensive than traditional borehole drilling and sampling, but in the very early days, we needed to learn how to use it. I had been actively involved in laboratory testing, but after the arrival of the cone rig, I spent time as a field engineer with one of our drillers, who would later become our lead CPT operator. I'd help acquire field data and then later use combinations of CPT, boring, and lab data to provide geotechnical project recommendations. In 2003, my colleague Dean and I were working on a project north of Virginia, Minnesota. US 53 was being realigned and widened, and the area where we were working <clears throat> was a swampy lowland near Johnson Creek. We needed to get an estimate of the depth and extent of the swampy deposits for the new roadway embankment construction. This is probably the project where I learned to appreciate that it's generally easier to get somewhere where a roadway already is than to a project site where a roadway will eventually be. I recall having a feeling of appreciation for how Dean managed to maneuver the rig back into the forest. It was winter and we were about a thousand feet from the existing roadway. It certainly felt like much more. What I'll call the easiest access was through uneven snow and ice-covered ground in a heavily wooded area behind a gas station. The only reason you'd know we were in the right place at all was the fact that there were occasional orange-colored survey flags on the brush. One very cold, crisp February morning, we start our day. Dean and I haul the computer, the cables, and other electronics out to the site, level up the rig, and realize that the laptop screen isn't liking the bitter cold any one bit. It's pretty much blank. We decide to run the cabling into the operator cab, and in a less than ideal setting for rapid feedback, Dean will run the push controls from the outdoor deck while I monitor the data from the slightly warmer cab of the truck. We pushed a few soundings the day before and knew generally what to expect. A few feet of snow and frost, about 10 to 20 feet of very soft organic materials, followed by relatively clean sands with increasing strength. We figure this arrangement would work at least until temperatures soared into the high teens with the mid-morning sun. Well, that day turned out to be a bit more memorable than either of us anticipated. We started our first push, Dean is advancing the probe at the standard two centimeters per second, and we're at about 20 feet of rod in the ground. We can both tell the rig is starting to rise, where at least one of the leveling jacks is now up off the ground. Some additional resistance can be felt, and the tip stress was quickly increasing on the screen. That's when the rig dropped, the jack suddenly thudding back into the packed snow. The computer screen was now alight with sensor error notices flashing, attempting to outdo one another for my attention. Signal lost, cannot read transducers, bad data connection, or things to that effect. The hydraulics were back to their calm purr and the rods were pushing easy again, maybe a little too easy. Uh, I signal to Dean to stop and I show him the screen. Now those with experience in these things will find themselves correct in the conclusion they've just drawn. We broke the rods and planted a cone in the ground. In nearly immediate retrospect, uh, the organic materials weren't providing much support for the rods. As the probe encountered comparatively dense sand, it started slowing while we continued pushing at the prescribed rate from above, the rods started moving laterally and buckled. After ending the test and pulling out the rods, we found that we broke a rod at a connection, severed the data cable, and lost the lower portion of the rods, cable, and cone. I recall a certain bit of excitement that we had successfully saved the data file. While we had another cable, uh, more rods, and another cone, they were all back in the support truck back at the gas station. Hauling CPT rods and cabling through the cold and snow, and then restringing tens of meters of cable for field maintenance was not how I expected to be spending that particular morning. As you might imagine, we were a bit more conservative with the next several pushes, but even with the planted cone, the site investigation was a success. The CPT plots showed very clearly the change in stratigraphy from the soft organic soils to the deeper sandy soils, and provided the information I needed for the geotechnical design recommendations. It certainly wasn't the only lesson I learned in the field during my career. I'm Derek Dosenbrock, and this was my field trip. 
Field Trips is a production of ASCE and the Geo Institute.